So I meant to watch this live. Hey, Gala, it's going good. The issue is that I didn't realize that the event, which is being hosted in Arizona, was on Mountain Time instead of Pacific Time. I thought Arizona was Pacific Time. Nobody told me that Arizona wasn't a Pacific state, you know? I don't, I don't know. So we're actually a little bit behind, but that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna, it looks like they're behind as well, because if they weren't behind, then Tucker Carlson would be the one talking right now. And, oh, there he is. Okay, we're, we're just gonna go back. In the spirit of a live event, I'm not gonna pause, or I'll try not to, okay? Let's go. This is the feed as it was broadcasted. I'm not, this isn't me. This is how TPUSA's America First live stream VOD was broadcasted officially. This is not a joke. Oh my God, this is real. I'm not joking. This is not my internet. This is actually the VOD. As you can see, this is, this is real. This is, you see, I, I just want to be clear, okay? We can watch another video if you want. Here's Tucker Carlson, fittingly enough. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Look at that. See? Normal frame rate. TPUSA America Fest, okay? There we go. God, you know, the sonorous sounds of this musical talent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really being brought out right now this is good i i wonder if i wonder if the whole thing is like this i know it fixes eventually okay i'm just gonna <laughs> it's stylistically designed to be that way it's supposed to show biden's america is broken Ooh, that's based how how cool would it be if it was like Biden's America, and it was like this, and then Trump walks out there and instantly everything fixes. Uh, Trump's America, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. I can't do this anymore, I'm skipping. <gasps> it fixed. Oh my God, look at those colored lights. The only colored things Republicans like. All right. Oh my God. All right. Okay. Individual genius of man. To All right. Lead it in. Yeah, brother. Yeah, brother. Yeah. We unleash the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent I'm than has ever been done before. Freedom and the dignity of the what individual the fuck? have been more available than in any other place on earth. Oh the price shit. for this freedom at times has been high. We have never been unwilling to pay that price. Oh my god, dude. Hogs are soying so hard right now. The entire audience is just Wojaks. Literally, like, all conservatives want is to be strapped to a, a theater chair and watch the Bioshock Infinite opening. That's all they want. Literally, that's all they care. That's all they want. They don't want health care or jobs or anything. They just... Oh my god, is that Death Grips? I love the juxtaposition between this base boosted shit and the whitest man on earth walking towards a podium in a full suit. Having met him in person, I can confirm that Charlie Kirk is the whitest human being who has ever lived. You know. This slaps the- yeah, USA base boosted plus reverb. Let's go! He's gonna do the stanky leg. Gonna do a jig. Thank you. 
That music was subliminal le messaging. You're all Trump supporters now. <laughs> Yeehaw! Thank you, everybody. It's, um, it's a great day to be in America. What would you say? In Biden's America? No, sir. Really? Please take a seat, everybody. I want to just give a thanks to our amazing Turning Point USA staff that have put all this on. The work they have put in is unbelievable. Give it up for our Turning Point USA staff. They've done an unbelievable job. They got a lot of money. And oh, we have God. people from all across the country here. And for those of you that have been coming to Turning Point USA events for a couple years, look around, everybody. You are not alone, and we're going to win, and we're going to win big time. Look around. It's we're going to win. We're going to win big, just like we did in 20... We are here to celebrate the greatest nation ever to exist in the history of the world. We're here to reclaim the narrative. We have over 10,000 people from all across the country I'm told we have people from all 50 states, from Alaska. Who's from Alaska out there? Someone's there. Right Woo! there from Hawaii. Who's from Hawaii? Someone's got to be from Hawaii. There to California. We won't hold that against you. Just saying. That's right. Yeah, I'm an AXer. What about it? We Weeb's winning. MAGA's coping. It's true. How about Texas? We got some people from Texas here. And Arizona. I mean, come on. We got some people from Arizona. Ooh. Guys, remember when Arizona did the, the vote audit and found that Biden actually had more votes America than were counted? America is our home. And what's been going on in our country for far too long is we have allowed self-interested politicians and liars True. to take advantage of us True. and to destroy our home. True. No more. We're taking back our country, everybody. We're not going to. Shoe is soying right now. She on heads in the audience. She's already. She's we have losing. Unique she's lost. We history and culture as Americans. We need to be unafraid to say that. Unfortunately, the fact that we as Americans have to now tolerate the renaming of schools from Abraham Lincoln to some sort of woke nonsense in san francisco this is the issue that affects the america that we are not putting up statues to thomas jefferson but instead tearing them down this we is as americans must understand what affects the real people we get to live in the united states of america a gift from god that we get to be americans the that feel when it's a secular state greatest nation ever to exist that feel when separation america of church and has state has always been focused on eternal principles rooted in the natural law like we schools teaching children to be grateful. We are people that want to conserve the good, the true, and the beautiful against those that want to try and destroy it. That means, and you saw this in the last year, and I'll talk about it in a second, that it's one thing to post something on television or to do something weird on social media. Uh -huh. It's another thing to try to indoctrinate your kids. We're not going to tolerate that anymore. Yeah, very specific. First. Yeah, what does it mean? We don't know, but we're mad. We celebrate our birthday every July. The fact that we as a nation have a birthday is a big deal. July 4th, 1776, when Thomas Jefferson wrote, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands of that which is tied to them and never the separate but equal station, which derives to get from that the laws quick. of nature and nature's God. Everybody, no other country in the history of the planet, in the history of the human species, was founded on an eternal call that says you as a human being have dignity. I think he's just, com he's completely making this up, right? At least no, no other nation has ever been founded on the idea of human rights. That you have a right to speech, that you have a right to organize, that you have a right to start a family. And we recognize what? in America, you have a right to start a what? what the regime says currently. In other countries, you can't even start a family, okay? God, and you have them naturally. The fuck is he talking about? In other countries, no one has ever bred. All sissies and all straggots are sent immediately to the gulag. And they can never take them away. It is government's role to protect our rights against tyranny. Government does not give you rights. Government is not going to tell you how many people you get to have over for Thanksgiving or Christmas. What? They work for us. The United States Constitution <laughs> starts with we the people. They work for us, everybody. 
Vote for me, and I will ensure that you can have 20, we 50, 1,000 people at every Thanksgiving right now, celebration. Our government. It would be illegal to we have to less than 12. Because if you dare say that you don't like your government, the media says that you're unpatriotic. Questioning your government is one of the most patriotic things a citizenry can do. I, they didn't remember this from 2016 to 2020, I gotta say. They didn't, they didn't quite recall Never that. Never in American history have we seen the government so disconnected from the people. This is what I think drives all of you to come to an event like this. <laughs> this is what motivates you to run for school board. Who's running for school board, by the way? Raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're taking back the country. By the way, I just want to say super fucking quick, okay? I actually saw this on TPUSA's website while checking the scheduling of this thing. This is so creepy. I can't believe I didn't bother to look at this before, okay? On TPUSA's website, right here on the top, okay, they have the school board watch list where you can actually sign up to be like, like, literally, like, I think it's, like, disrupting school board meetings. Like, look at this. Like, that's on their front page, you know? It's really, really weird, creepy shit, you know? Like, enlisting militant boomers to come and fucking scream at people in your local... Oh, there he is. By the way, who homeschools? Anyone homeschool here? Raise your hand. You are the heroes. Give it up for our homeschooling parents. Why aren't you drinking this time? I don't have any alcohol. Sorry. I'm all out. The people... I would have us. bought some today, but I was busy our buying guns. Our leaders are not. The disconnect between our leaders and you has never been greater. How many times do we send politicians to Washington, D.C. or Sacramento, where they what? say they're going to do one thing and they do the exact opposite? Sacramento? You see, Who do you send America to Sacramento? has the greatest people on earth. America is the most generous, decent, benevolent, forward-thinking... Uh -huh. productive people on the planet Forward and we thinking. have been abused for far too long from a self by a self-righteous ruling class and yeah both yeah parties, by the way it's not even political i think we all agree yeah this is not even about parties this is about right versus wrong and truth versus lies and light versus everybody are you implying the republicans also exploit and ignore the people or because because he doesn't so he can't does say the ruling that class treat you while our borders are wide open, over two million people are crossing into our country so far. Good. I want more. More! Inflation double digits. Double di Wait, is the annual inf Hold on. Double digits? What? The annual rate from September 2020 to September 2021 was 4.4%. Where are you getting double digits? What the fuck are you talking about? What? That's through the PCE deflator. The CPI index was at 6.2 for the same time period. Okay. Maybe by double digits, he means the single digits place and then the one-tenth place. Like with the, with the dot between. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We give $85 billion of weapons to the Taliban. I could go on. What's the priority? The priority. Wait. Who said what? Priority. The priority. The priority. The priority. What's the priority? The priority. Fuck, I can't hear it. I'm sorry. Is that... All of a sudden, you saw the Department of Justice in September issue a memo saying that... Mom, Was it, I hate the Jews? It sounded a little... Let's just go with that. Moms and dads that show up to school board meetings across the country... He said the Vosh pit is like true. ...domestic terrorists. Now, when the Department of Justice issued that letter, something different happened. Because the conservative movement that was around 10 years ago mm -hmm. would have been really intimidated by that Ten i love years ago, i love this we would feed, have been by like, the way wow, are they using wi-fi the department of justice is saying that we have to sit down and shut up but you know what happened next more people showed up to school board meetings once that memo was written more people started to question what their kids were learning more people they're said, too afraid to use 5g teach critical <laughs> race theory to my child i'm not gonna put up with this they're like isn't 4g what was one half of 5g the regime Be better use dial up that there's something new happening in this country and it's unexpected and what's happening is all of a sudden we 
the sovereign in this country are uh-huh. finally reclaiming our rightful role as citizens of this great country. Not participants, not, not spectators, but participants in this experiment. A nation is defined by its people. And I actually think he's correct here, by the way. Active participation in the pro- in like democratic process and civil society is something Republicans harp on way more than Democrats. Like Democrats aren't like getting people to go, like enlisting people to go invade their local school boards or like g- going to local like town hall meetings to screech and stuff. To be to give credit where it's true, it is true. Republicans do demand of their supporters a great deal of participation in the in the roles of citizenry Uh, that is true you know they're not doing it for a good cause but the moms and dads that have been showing up to these school board meetings running for school board and doing these amazing things on the city and local level all of a sudden this is happening in all 50 states in counties all across the country and we sneaky photographer back there as conservatives it's people who love freedom that there's a fundamental difference between America as a country, Uh which we are, and that we're not a colony. This is not a place where all of a sudden you just get to go make a bunch of money and leave. We are a country that has an economy in it. We are not an economy that happens to be in a country. Now, what we have is a ruling class, people in charge, Bezos, Zuckerberg, plutocrats, that hate you. Do you want to raise they, taxes? They can make as much money off of you as possible. Busies. Go give a hundred million dollars to BLM Incorporated. Do you want to raise and taxes? It, get out of here. There are more important things than making money in this world, everybody. Passing he doesn't. values down to your children, having a nation you can recognize, having a southern border. Remember, remember the game they play. They will posture at populism when trying to get the support of the citizenry, but they will never step against the real supporters, the uh, the the moneyed class, the corporate interest, the private, uh, the, the military industrial complex. They will never. So they will signal, you know, they'll they'll uh, to be to be fair. Nazis did the same thing, you know. Nazis talked about how America was in America, Jesus, how Nazi Germany it was being exploited and torn apart by moneyed interests. You know, they made it about the Jews, of course, but they talked a big game about that. Then Nazi Germany takes power. Did corporations get less powerful? No, they did not. In fact, privatization as a term was invented to describe what they did by turning over to private hands the industry of the state, made it even more corporatist than it was beforehand. And Charlie has no plans whatsoever for meaningfully challenging corporate power. Making sure that this beautiful gift that we've been given continues for future generations. And this is what makes this gathering different and this conservative movement different. We'll talk about high taxes and low taxes. You we'll know talk you will. about free markets. We Wait, love no, all you of won't. those things. But we know there's a deeper game being played, everybody, no, no, you than don't. tax policy right now in our country. The game that's being played the is woke. very simple. Are you thankful that you're an American or are you angry that yeah, you're an American? Go. And are you willing to do something Didn't about it? Didn't he just say difference. criticizing the and government is the hallmark of is America? That we're no longer going to accept the managed decline of America. We're not going to accept these weak need politicians <laughs> that continually say one thing and then do another. And so we all know America's on very fragile footing. Um, we know out of all the different kind of pers- all the different things that are happening in front of us. And I want to speak specifically to the students in the audience. And by the way, Turning Point USA students out there, you guys are American heroes for what you guys are doing on college and high school campuses. It is very hard. They want to people be a with strong knees so they can get their dicks up longer. Hard Nancy Reagan had very strong campuses. knees. Guess what? They're telling the rest of the world, I don't care if you call me a racist, a bigot, a homophobe, a colonialist. I don't care if you kick me out of the fraternity or sorority. My country matters more than my social status. My country matters more than my Instagram likes. My country matters more than my TikTok popularity. My nation matters more than whether or not I'm popular on a college campus. And my challenge to some of the adults... My nation matters more than if I can hit, hit, hit a dab. My nation matters more than than if I can pull off the stanky. Like my nation matters more than my haircut, as you can see. My nation matters more. <laughs> Adults out here, you could be inspired by the courage of these young conservatives on campuses that take that leap of faith. Do the stanky leg? I don't know what but the stanky leg is. It just sounds funny. And even a, bit, a little bit younger has some very specific challenges. We would be fooling ourselves 
if we were saying that this generation has all the same opportunities in front of them that prior generations had. Now, let Good, me have clear. more social spending. I think that kind of there's something to be said that young people sometimes can work harder and apply themselves better. Fine. I think it's a mistake, though, when oh? all of a sudden there's kind of this generational lecturing that occurs. Oh, I, come on. When I was young, I didn't have to go to debt to go to college. I could work my way through it. Yeah, the game has changed if you haven't found out. Ooh. And the best example of one of the great moral injustices ever done to our generation was Ooh. how we mishandled the Fauci Chinese coronavirus. <laughs> The fa oh my god how do you you're you have all the structure of a point that you're making you've built the foundations up we got you've got everything you need and then the fauci chinese dare we call it biden coronavirus thank you by the way fauci should be in prison for how he handled what does this have to do with anything you were saying you were talking about college debt I think he actually, I think that was unscripted. I think he actually realized he was going too far with the economic inequality thing and he didn't know how to end it. So he just brought it back. I actually think like he, he went off a board and he was like, wait, hold on. This was too much. I can't, I can't cap this one off. Then we have to. <laughs> Fauci, 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 lock him up, lock him up, lock him up, lock him up. Just, just so the media hears. So the media is going to write this up. Uh -huh. It's lock him up. Am I hearing that right? Lock no, him I said up. that. He heard me. He heard me. It's a crime against our generation and a crime against humanity. What that self-righteous sycophant has been able to do to you, your family, and your children. One mask, two masks. This has now, nothing to do with the point he was making. I really think he pivoted there because he realized he had gone had a too far. Ninety-nine survivability rate. For a virus that was That's not an essential threat to humanity, let alone to our generation. What Wait. did we decide to do? No, lock no. down a generation that was not at significant risk. Wait, we locked down everyone. Take away their prom, their graduation, <laughs> their social activities, in-person learning. We what does this have to do with college debt? Suicide, mental health issues, medication. The most suicidal, the most depressed, the most alcohol addicted generation in American history. Then, alcohol as soon as we start to reopen Wait, that the economy, can't be. Millenn wait, M Zoomers or millennials? Wait, the most alcohol addicted. Wait, people are people are not getting addicted. Wait, hold on. I'm pretty sure if we're looking for alcoholism, older generations would be way more modern. It'd be like fentanyl, weed, uh, uh, op opioids of any kind, like something like that, right? It's Maybe he's thinking of vaping. Does he think like people vape alcohol? Millennials try to go buy a home and everything's 50% more expensive because we decided to create $7 trillion that we don't have what? to go inflate all the hard assets in our country. What? It was That's a scam played towards the next generation. Well, co wait. And on top College of it, debt existed we say, before oh, COVID. Now you have to go get a vaccine. What? Uh, waiting, yeah. Like, uh, vaccines, modern medicine. Now you have to go get a vaccine uh, I love polio. Your will, and if you don't, you can't go work at a job, even though you might have already got the virus, and you might not be at risk from getting the virus that you already have, because you got to get a vaccine, even though you already had the virus. Good, to make get, sure you two, don't get, good get two, get two shots, get five. To make sure you don't get the virus that get you should get, because you might die, not die from the virus you shouldn't get. Am I following this correctly? Yeah, get a hundred. I don't sense. care. It does it because it's insane. And we at Turning Point USA have been very clear about this. And the fact that not every conservative has said this out loud and repeatedly, no one should be forced to get the vaccine against their will under any circumstances whatsoever. You're not Period. being forced to. End of story. You just, if you want a job. Guys, remember when drug tests were incredibly common for like basically all jobs and conservatives didn't give a fuck? Even though in that case, it wasn't about preventing a pandemic or people's health. It was literally just about moral policing. And they didn't give a shit for decades. For like a fucking decades and decades, nobody gave a fuck. And now all of a sudden, they care tremendously about job like drug requirements. Yeah, they still are, but less so. They, they've loosened it in the past. What? That was me. It's not me. It's just the feed. Treatments. We're not even allowed to have a conversation. Thought crimes. Ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, vitamin D, vitamin C, azithromycin, you aspirin, can? monoclonal antibodies, or Regeneron. 
No, we're not even allowed to talk about that. Instead, it's a one-size-fits-all policy. Why? Because if you ever talked about early treatments or early intervention, then you might not have been as afraid. You see, tyrants specialize on not, not me. your authoritarians me. want you to be in a position of fear all the time. Oh, shit, they're getting to him. The deep state, 1984, no, they're shutting it down. They say we have to shut down New York. Crawling, they're fucking... No from it. Big brother. The ruling class. Oh, they're he's, they're trying to stop him. You to scream. Who? <sighs> you don't need. You to jab your children against a virus that probably won't kill them at all. Like they're conservatives. All. They're trying to conserve Wi-Fi. <laughs> we see it all across this room and across the they're country. They're trying to save up people waking up to exactly the motivations of either Fauci or the whole ruling class, which is very simple. This was a means to the end for them to try to control your life. And your children, sure. and we are not going to let that happen. Everybody. They're going to turn we into Biden bots against the medical industrial complex, and we're making up. We're waking up to the measures against us. Are you going to tax them or nationalize them? But it's not the only. Remember when I debated Charlie, and he was going off on like pharmaceutical giants, and he was like, "Well, how can you support pharmaceutical giants by having people get medicine?" And I was like, "Dude, I would nationalize the pharmaceutical industry. I would let. I would. I." I would have their CEOs brought for crimes against humanity and have their entire assets seized by the state. Don't talk to me about <laughs> opposing the fucking pharmaceutical complex. Virus in America. I think there's actually a more dangerous virus than the Chinese coronavirus. Wokeism. Wokeism. The media. That's pretty good. I gotta say, I, it's hard to. The disagree media with that. spreads the wokeism. It's the virus, and there's a lot of different words to describe it. Wo wokeism, diversity, oh equity, and. Does he know? How does he know? How does he know? Illusion, critical race theory, and it's everywhere. Ah. At Columbia University, they have black-only graduation ceremonies. At Western ah. Washington University, oh, they have throat. black only dormitories. United Airlines is now announcing that 50% of all the new pilots they're going to hire are going to be black pilots. I don't know about you. I don't care about the color of the skin of my pilot. I hope he can or she can land the plane when they need to land the plane. Or they, Charlie. Or they. God, I've got, I've they work have been it trying in. to implement this existential threat against the American way of life. You know, I'm old enough to remember. Remember, he, he was literally just a minute ago. He was like, there's nothing better than criticizing your government. Remember that? I remember that. I remember those days. Remember? that when you actually cared about people's skin color, you were rightly called a racist when you cared about people's skin color. Remember those racist civil rights protesters who cared about equality for black the, people? the color of their skin. We should judge them based on things they can change, not they can't change. Martin Luther King was like, is, I fight so for the rights of the black man, Charlie Kirk because Why black man? The Why not everyone? You could be called in American society, and no, it's not an adulterer or an ax murderer, it's a racist. <laughs> and it's too bad because there's a, there's a widespread issue with that term. There's a supply and demand issue with racism in America. America is such a unracist, non-racist country. It's the supply we demand have people argument. like Jussie Smollett that need to make up racial incidents in the middle of the night in Chicago Topical. to try to prove that we are racist when he hires two Nigerian brothers wearing Make America Great Again hats when it's negative 30 degrees outside we did this. while he's going to Subway to try to prove that we're so racist. That's proof that there's not enough racism out there to prove the fact that America's racist. The, the one least guy? The ever to exist in the history of the world. That one guy was enough? That was it? That was all you need? One dude faking a hate crime is enough to prove there's no racism? Oh my god, that's... We also are suffering under the virus of political correctness. Crazy. Now... I'm going to say some things. I just, I fucking love how they open, because he's such a disingenuous weasel, how you open with these populist talking points. We the people, this isn't political, we're fighting against the elites. And then he's going to spend the real meat of his speech talking about esoteric culture war issues that affect fucking nobody. Here, I care about the American people. Let's talk about Jussie Smollett. Let's, let's talk about wokeism and critical race theory and renaming schools and tearing down. Yeah, this affects real ordinary working day people. And not people who just follow the hate news fucking 24-7? Allowed to say. Only women can become pregnant. That's it. I said it. I know. I know. So brave! 
Oh my god, he he said it. He said the thing conservatives all believe. Oh, men are different brave than boy. women. I know it's brave boy, brave boy. Oh my god! Why have we allowed this nonsense to get as far as it is? The reason, and we're breaking that right now at this conference into our amazing. Here's what Americans care about: trans issues. Sponsors and the people streaming live on Fox Nation and all that is. I'm this, streaming live. Is we're breaking it because you need to not care what they call you when you say something that is true. When you say the N-word, you need to not care when they call you racist for saying the N-word. You need to not care what they call What's you this, Charlie? Say something What's this? True. We huh? live under the tyranny huh? of their social conformity. We live under the tyranny that they hold the cards like, well, I might not be invited to the Cool Kids Club. Look around. You're at the coolest kids club in America right now, everybody. Who cares what they have? The point is this. Is that everything they are, they accuse us of. This really has the energy of, like, the misfit kids at the treehouse, you know what I mean? Yeah, we yeah we were not allowed at any of the parties today, but look at how much bubblegum we have, you know? The cool say, kids yeah, come. you know, the right is really intolerant. Meanwhile, you're not allowed to come on any college campus. You, Meanwhile, they you, say you that, can. you know, we have a racial problem in the country, yet they're the ones that are focusing on people's skin color. Very simple. Focusing on to People do say, what? How do we retake the country? They always say focusing on it. Like focusing on it to do what? To worsen racial relations or alleviate them? Like they're always like they focus on it. Well, Martin Luther King focused on race. What do you It can happen overnight. We can retake the country when decent people start to care more about a greater good. But well, MLK about what was is a mixed right bag, than so whether or not their personal cost will be. And guess what? It's for some of you out there that are business owners. You say, well, Charlie, you know, I, I can't push back against this. I might lose business. You're right. You might. Huh? Charlie, I, I don't know if I could speak out against this. I might not be able to get a job in Free my market, field. baby. You're right. The question is, what matters more? That's the question. And here's the oh my God. secret that no one wants to tell you out loud. We, we speak for the American people. The now left, go lose your job to fight against wokeism. Without every single person in this room sacrificing some form of comfort. Lose your it's jobs for me. Get it fired for me. Lose if business for me. Your life will just become instantaneously and immediately better, no matter what. And you're also going to be able to stand for conservative principles and say only women can become pregnant and say that America is the least racist country in the history of the world and say that white privilege is a racist myth that doesn't exist. Die if you're, for if me. If you're willing to say these things, then yeah, you'll pay a price. But look around. When all of a sudden thousands and thousands and millions of people are saying it, they realize that all of a sudden they have been ruling under the tyranny of a minority because there are uh, more which of us minority? than them. There are more Americans that what? believe things that you do not have to overthink about. You don't have to, you don't have to say, you know, do we need some sort That's of That's mathematically campus, incorrect. You know, lecture or study about whether men and women are different. Like, yeah, I mean, some ideas are so stupid you have to go to college to believe them. Like, we know that, right? I say that as we run a college organization. So... But it stops when we start to say we care about what is right in the future of the nation more than what this we can do. This audio, what they holy can do crap. We're, we are a nation suffering from amnesia. Put simply, we are a nation that has Alzheimer's. We do not know our history, our past, therefore we don't really know where to go forward. And they're doing this intentionally. Why do you think they're trying to take down the statues of Teddy Roosevelt? Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln. Now, they say it's all oh, because those people were terribly racist and awful. It's a bunch of nonsense, you know. It. These people were Is this even happening anymore? The tearing down stat Is this even I haven't heard a story about tearing down a statue in like a while. I know they eventually took down the Charlottesville one, but like uh, I I yeah, I'm not even hearing. I haven't When has anyone taken down a Lincoln statue? Lin Lincoln statue removed. Has this happened like once or Oh, this was it. I remember. They removed one statue of Lincoln, which was a statue of him over a recently freed slave still in bondage. Yes, that's right. There was one Lincoln statue they wanted to tear down. It was the one where he was standing over the enchained black man. Okay. So, apart from this one, is there another <laughs> Lincoln statue? 
Because <laughs> I don't think the Lincoln part is what led to this getting taken down. <laughs> uh, oh, there was another one. Hold on. Uh, Portland, too. Let me see. Portland protesters tear down statues of Abraham Lincoln, Theodore Roosevelt. Okay, this is from 2020. This was last year. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Are there, like, photos here? Oh, this is it? A statue of Abraham Lincoln in Portland South Park block after his top pro So literally, they just, like, fucking put a rope around it, its head and, like, pulled, and, like, that's... Okay. You could... Jesus. Yeah, like, two dudes could do this. I thought it was some sort of, like, organized takedown or whatever, you know? Oh, my God. Rose, they built the country that we get to enjoy. Okay? It's that simple. It's Woo! nonsense. Instead, the reason is they don't want you to have a historical reference point of something that is amazing They literally don't want to teach history. and courageous. They want you to act as if you're the first humans ever to exist. They want you what? to believe that Wait, no they want to teach history and might have actually sacrificed so you can live free. And the the deeper significance of this and this is why we as conservatives need to understand the broader game at play here. Is that when they all of a sudden say, yeah, we're going to teach the 1619 Project. And by the way, Nicole Hannah-Jones, if you're watching this, the 1619 Project is total garbage and you're a con artist. And it should be taken out of every single school in the country. It's absolute nonsense. Sorry. Never does Nicole Hannah-Jones talk about how Thomas Jefferson actually banned the importation of slaves in the United States as one of his first acts as president in March of 1803. Okay. Never does Nicole Hannah-Jones actually what? ever talk about how Thomas Jefferson argued for the abolition of slavery as the Virginia governor in the 1790s. But did he Never do it? Never does Nicole Hannah-Jones from the 1619 Project ever talk about in the original draft of the U.S. They are so perpetually mad about the 1619 Project. I learned about this stuff in like elementary school or high school or whatever when I learned about basic American history. They're just mad like, eh, this, this, this. they're like, yeah, the the most American thing you can do is criticize the government, and then they're like, "This project is critical of America's government at the time." They don't say everything about everything. They point out the fact that there were millions of slaves who were born and died in America, and the founding fathers let it happen. Uh, well, facts don't care about your feelings. U.S. Declaration of Independence. Did Thomas Jefferson actually admonish? King George for bringing the sin of slavery to the United States. Never does Nicole Hannah Jones say nine out of 13 of the original colonies actually had abolished slavery by ratification of the U.S. Constitution. Why does that matter? Never he tried to bring this up to me too. Like most of the, this is like saying that like, you, you like, hey, you, you kidnap and rape girls in your house. And you're like, no, I have a rape room. I don't do it in my house. I have my basement. I, it just only happens in my basement. What do you, what, it's not my house. Like what do you, like it's meaningless. What does that mean? That, that doesn't change anything. What? What you? It's still bad. It's, it, it doesn't uh, shuffling it off to part of the country doesn't change the fact that your country has slavery. Nicole Hannah Jones ever teach your kids the first anti-slavery convention was where held in Philadelphia in 1775. Why? Because she's a liar and she shouldn't be a professor and she shouldn't be teaching your children anything about U.S. history. It doesn't we, mean any of that. We but sure the, do the care about any of that. issues affecting ordinary point. Americans. Now let, let me scream about New York Times journalists and, and historians. That you stand on the shoulders of people before you that even allowed you to have freedom. Imagine the imagine the conservatism is so cucked, dude. They're literally just I am, celebrating I subservience. Is a byproduct of my own action. That's basically what they say every single day. Is that anything before you is racist and terrible and awful? What? We know it's exactly the, the opposite. And that's what? rooted in gratitude. You see, gratitude, if a nation... This is, is what he taught me, too, that schools should teach their children gratitude. What an unimaginably cucked worldview. Yeah, dude, nothing's better than criticizing the government. Now, let's literally use government-run like institutions to teach children to be grateful to the government. What the fuck are you talking about? Holy shit. Thankful. If a nation has gratitude, then all of a sudden it's harder to have a revolution, isn't it? Do you notice what? that people don't say thank you as often as they used to? Not just what? in interpersonal relationships, but also thank you to the parents that raised you, that allowed you to have the opportunities you have. What the fuck thank are we talking about? Thank you to the organizations about? or efforts that try to make America a freer place, or most importantly, thank you to God for giving you life. This <laughs> life is really special. 
Yeah! Now, why is that important? As soon as you say thank you, it slows you down and actually makes you a happier person and a less bitter person. Literally, this is about subservience. He is describing subservience right now. He talked a big game about fighting the elites. Well, Charlie, what's the categorical difference between this gratitude towards God or toward your country? What about gratitude towards the pharmaceutical industry, which is the only reason we have a modern industrialized society? The fact that we understand germ theory, the fact that we take vaccines against polio, smallpox, and other things? What about gratitude towards every institution you don't like? See, that's the thing. He wants selective gratitude, not real gratitude towards people who've changed your life or your betters or whatever, but gratitude towards institutions that'll keep you quiet. He said it himself, say thank you to slow you down so there's less chance of a revolution. You hear it right in his voice. It's not really about being thankful. It's about hamstringing you. It's about keeping you quiet, subservient, so that it's less likely that you'll meaningfully challenge power. He's so blatant with his language. It's so insane that people follow this shit. And what we're experiencing is a generation of students and young people that are being trained to do this, but also by, you know, the self-righteous ruling class that are basically saying that you have nothing to be thankful for and you have nothing to be thankful to. This is, does not mean anything. See, we have a totally different perspective. We say we're small in this unwinding plan all around us. That it's, I'm going to speed up slightly. Life is a miracle in and of itself. The fact that we have consciousness and our ability to breathe is something so beyond even human reason. And the fact what? you're able to live in a country where you can get- How low of a bar do you have to set with your politics to try to distract people who follow you by telling them to be thankful for their breath? It, that's when you know you're offering very, very little. That's when you know you've got nothing to give people. Like, hey, if you all, like, thought to consider how the- Imagine, like, any other context where this is acceptable. Like, going to a soup kitchen or to a school and people are like, well- we should take a moment to really reflect on how happy we are that we can breathe. Okay. Gather like this All right. and be around amazing friends. Let's just talk about the West. You think gatherings like this are happening in Austra Australia right now? How about the United Australia Kingdom, is Germany, the... Austria? Of course not. They, you have what? 10 people in a room in Australia, they bring in the police. And yet here we have 10,000 people he not gathered in a room. There's something special you about that. You can have that. large mean, events there, I'm pretty sure. Is that, and we all know this. The nation is not going to save itself. We are living on the last gasp of the sacrifices of the generation that stormed Normandy Beach, the last gasp of the generation that gave us this. And so here's the question, and I think I know- Australia lets large events go through. Has it provided advice on the safe return of crowds to stadiums, arenas, and large theaters? They, you could have an event like this in Australia. The answer. Will our generations, millennials, Generation Z right there, are we willing to do what is necessary to sacrifice he doesn't what know. feel good for something that is good? Because guess what? Our opposition, we have an amazing advantage. Uh -huh. Their ideas are awful. <laughs> they tend to be very angry, bitter people. They're always trying to destroy, and they've never built anything in their life. Ever. And if so this guy was around back in 1776, he would have been advocating gratitude for gratitude towards the king. Large families and getting married 100%. early and having lots of children. We get to be the ambassadors of reality, of things that you could see. As Thomas Jefferson said, the laws of nature and nature's God. I want to do one housekeeping thing. Raise your hand if you came to this event alone, not knowing anybody. Raise your hand. Okay. If you are part of a turning point, a lot chapter, of lonely people know, out there, um, or you know other people, go find people that just raise their hand and make sure by the end of tonight they know somebody else. The fact that young people, Stay in the high cult. school kids that traveled the country alone just to be here, and they—it's amazing. They should not. They should not leave this event or this room tonight. Do not let them somebody leave. Somebody saying, "Hey, do you want to hang out with us? Hey, do you want to, um, you know, get to know us? Whatever." The point is that that's a leap of faith, and we want to make sure that we help you guys out in any way possible. And we'll close, bar the doors. <laughs> this event is so special. And this all started um, when I was 18 years old, and I wanted to say thanks to Bill Montgomery, who's passed away, for his amazing mentorship and help for what he did for all of us in this room. Wait, is she there? Yeah, she's America? there. America? Only in America. Freedom as well. Only in America, though, can an 18-year-old with no money, no college, no connections and no idea what he was doing. Start something from nothing in a small garage in Lamont, Illinois. I don't know and if one that's thing true. Led to the other 
So now the largest grassroots conservative freedom movement in the country. And that's thanks to you. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Reminder that the Nordic countries actually have higher social mobility than America does. Also, she went because she was invited. Thank you. This isn't private info. This has been known. This music. She was gone over the edge. Do you guys think I wouldn't have gone? Do you guys think I wouldn't have gone if I was invited? Are you kidding me? If I got an invitation, I would have fucking sprinted over there. Oh my god. I hate planes. This is worth it. When is Shu speech? I don't think Shu is presenting. This corridor is more than... And it all leads... Country away. Tucker, 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 Tucker Carlson. I think I... Tucker, 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 Tucker. Bring it out! The second whitest man. They didn't, they didn't prepare me for this. <laughs> what, what is this music? This, oh, this is crazy. urban beats. Thank you for having beats. me. This is, I, I have my, wa I have my watch set to East Coast time. Actually, this. Wait, is he looks silly. What are his, what are these leg straps? Is he sucking dick back there? Why has he got his bandies on? What are we? <laughs> he looks a little disheveled. You good? For four minutes from when I'm normally working, and. So I put on a necktie, because I put on a necktie every night at 7.45, just as a matter of habit. Even oh, it's alone. a shadow from the podium. Oh, oh yeah, okay. That makes more sense. Then the, then the dick suck bandies. Thank you. And just kidding. That I tracks that crazy yet. I'm never in a room this big. It's like, this is unbelievable. My world is better, though. I love it. Thank My you. reality is better. Yours is worse. I I, Mine is I better. I think I know about a hundred people. I know I do because they've been texting me. And I'm really sorry. I don't have my glasses on. I cannot see where you are. But I'm really glad to be in the same room with you. I can feel you not to be too groovy about it. So thanks. Gro um, groovy. I never, I don't travel very much and I never give speeches. And I'm only here for one reason. And that's because, and I'm just, this is as sincere as I can be. I've been watching Charlie Kirk carefully for about maybe oh, no. eight or nine years oh, no. since one of the early supporters of Turning Point came to me and said, there's this guy I'm supporting. He's a really bright young kid. And of course, Charlie Kirk is my age, you know, isn't that people. crazy? So I said, um, totally kidding. But I said, uh, you know, who is he? And he goes, well, he never went to college. So immediately I'm on his side, like 100%. And I said, well, he sounds pretty great. So I, I have my eye on Charlie Kirk. And, you know, he's saying things that I completely agree with, of course. I'm pretty mainstream kind of conservative person and have been my whole life. And then about two years ago, everything in the physical world, in the real world, which is to say distinct from the nonprofit, let's talk about how things should be world, completely changes, which is to say the country completely changes. And no one notices what? in the world that I live in. Like it's 2003 and full speed ahead. Hey. And I look over and I can see on Charlie Kirk's face that he kind of notices. This is not exactly the same as it was last year. This is like completely different and some of the things that we expected to happen didn't happen. It didn't change his core beliefs. He was still completely for freedom, most importantly for the country, for the family, the, you know, the better. Yeah, I'm actually interested here because I don't think he is a teleprompter. He's clearly not reading from a teleprompter right now. So this is, this might be one of the first times I've heard him talk without him looking at, yeah, so far he's just kind of babbling. Rock things that you can never be against. But he looks around and he's like, hmm, maybe we should acknowledge Yeah, he's coming off kind of timid, you know, kind of uh, submissive now, and breedable. Get rid of, not all, but maybe some of the bumper stickers we used to use and think about how to respond to what's actually happening. Now, that seems like kind of the basic requirement for adulthood in this country, no? Yes. But that's so far beyond so many people I know that it was like really unusual. She's just very I'm thankful. I'm very impressed by that. I'm very impressed by someone who's willing to notice the change and respond to it. So I'm completely on the side of Charlie Kirk. I think he's really impressive, and I'm here to say that. So here's the other thing. Thank you. So here's the other thing I'm here to say. So I um, host uh, the world's greatest TV show. Hold on. So here's the other thing I'm here to say. So I yes. Um, host the world's greatest TV six. show. Yes, camera six. They've got a this, great shot. This really is an unending litany of how horrible things are, and more precisely, how horrible the people running things are. 
which honestly you can't, as I often say to my oh, really now we're trying again. Two hours and I just oh, not plumb the depths skip of away. The operator didn't want to risk another blurry and zoom that's, in. That's exactly what I'm here to say. So there's a man in the front who just said, but there's a lot of good too. And that is right. So here's the one thing. So I never have time to think because, you know, I've got to write the script and, you know, we have to do the job every day. So I fly across the country and I have a little bit of time to think. And I'm thinking to myself, this really is the low point. It's got to be the low point. What are we talking about After right now? After which we have the rise where it starts to get better. And I, this is not, so that's in part a physics principle. In, in, in the famous words, like the smartest thing ever said in Washington was said by one of Richard Nixon's advisors who said, you know, if something can't continue forever, it won't. And I do kind of believe that. What? But when something is completely insane and counterproductive, when it doesn't even benefit the people pushing it, it probably can't continue. And let me just say one other thing that dawned on me this morning. So I'm a pretty milquetoast Episcopalian, so sometimes I miss the larger implications of things. But what? the things that are going on now are so crazy. And they're so disconnected. So normally, I was in Washington most of my life, what? and you know, something that I didn't like would happen, and you would say, well, that's because you know, they've got a ton of Pfizer stock. Or what? You know, they're taking money from this or that lobbyist, or they've just got bad ideas. Things are happening right now that can't be explained by the normal explanation. There's just absolutely no rational explanation for it. People are standing up and saying, let's, I mean, let's get rid of the cops, because I know that's going to make things better. Like, there's not one person okay. who, upon 15 seconds of reflection, thinks that's going to help anybody. I mean, not one person. So why would you say that? Well, there's only one reason to say that, and that's to destroy things. Ah. For its own sake. So we're finally at a, at a point. Now, you don't often see that. You see a lot of wrongheadedness. You see bad ideas. You see people who are corrupt. You know, there's some kind of scam going on underneath or whatever. It's, you, know, you think it's politics. It's actually Vegas. Okay, got it. But what? Vegas baby. So I'll see you at the experiment right now. So, totally kidding, obviously. But anyway, um, sorry, I, I shouldn't say stuff like that. I can't control myself. Limited self-control. So, what you don't see too much, in fact, I have never seen, is people wrecking stuff for the sake of wrecking stuff, even their own stuff. So what is that? What? You know, there's nothing in politics. There's nothing in reason. There's nothing. This is actually good. This is going to, this might get Shu to stop with the Tucker Carlson kick. This is really good. You know, I, I feel like she's in the front row starry eyed and then her face just falls with, with, with every, with every minute that passes. Within our recent human experience that can't explain that. So if you're a rational person, you don't even need to be a religious person. You have to conclude there is something that is unseen at work here. Like there is a spiritual dimension to this. I'm sorry, there just is. I don't care if I sound like. I, I don't care. I'll say it. I believe in I God at a conservative convention. Yeah, I do. People yeah, standing that's, up and saying, I'm Let's brave. Let's my own house down. Let's do it immediately. They are seized by something. They are. By a spirit of destruction. There we go. And that's just true. I don't know if that'd be the allowed devil. to be uttered in the Episcopal Church. They got the devil know. in them. I'm out. They need an exorcism. So, I would say, before I outline why I think things might be about to improve, let me just say, that's the framework to understand it. I don't think he's okay. It's he's not very the nervous. Normal sort of, you know, I'm, I'm watching the back stuff, and I'm, I'm truly horrified by it on a, on a real level, and I've become totally intolerant of it because it's too much. It's too cruel. It hurts too many people. It... Very tentative wants laughing. To say this, but, or, or, sorry, uh, clapping. You know, obviously... It's fun because Tucker Carlson's one of the largest conservatives in the country. The crowd should be losing their minds every time he finishes a sentence. But he's just going on minutes long rambling with no feedback from the audience. And it's very, very funny. It's class war against the weakest people. In the end, only Salvador and Busboys will have masks on, you know, because the peasants can't look at their leaders. Like, that's what it's actually about. And the vac stuff oh, is about punishing we're experimenting. people no New camera. Them. That's the truth. Okay? And I'm completely sick of it. And I'm going to soon be selling mugs that say naturally immune. Because if you're naturally immune, you earned it. And there we go. Fine. We stumbled I mean, our way into a point. And if you have earned it, and I know some in the room have, you know, like you earned it. You know? And some people really earned it at high cost. And you should be proud of it. And you shouldn't let anybody make you feel bad about it, boss you around about it, make you do anything you don't want to do. So I look at that. I'm like, what is this? You're telling five-year-olds to get, you know, to get this drug? I, I don't, I'm not going to get windy or luxury on it, but like, who would do that? Well, that's that's demonstrably true, but there's something else. It's evil. That is evil. Let's just let's just say it. It's evil. So the other dynamic that's going on is that the decisions are being made by people who are too far from the effects of the decisions. And as someone who had it beaten into him, and it's my temperament anyway, to really revere older people. I have trouble making fun, I'm be honest, of Joe Biden's mental decline because I feel guilty about it. 
Because I hope I'm 80 someday. I don't want people mocking me when I can't. You know what I mean? I want, I want my children to respect me. And very gently, you know, wipe the frosted flakes from my chin. <laughs> I mean it. And tell me that I make sense. And thank me for my wisdom when I can't remember what I'm saying. I can think all of us who make it to that age deserve to be treated with respect. Or at 1.3 times speed now. And for no now. other reason, that we made it. You make it to 80, you look around, and a lot of the people who you began with are not there anymore. You know, you're in a small percentage who made it, and I respect that. I do. It's like climbing Everest. Like, not all the Sherpas made it to the top, but you did. What are we... So is he is having an existential position. crisis? But I also feel like, because it's true, and it's true of every society, that the single most important task is to raise up people to replace you. That's why you have children. So your family continues after you die. That's the whole point. That's the point in the natural world. He's having Animals a... don't question this. They're not anxious. They don't, they don't think it's better to work at Citibank than to have kids. It's not even a thing. That's never occurred to my four dogs. They're like, I'm not really sure if I should reproduce. I could make vice president. Like, I'm going to meet with HR, but we'll see how it works. But no, they're just like, I mean, I'm not going to get more specific, but they're dogs. And we're animals too. And that's our most basic desire, is to leave something behind. Is to live forever in a better place in the afterlife, I... but to have our family continue hopefully forever. This, this feels life. like an existential our children, crisis. Our grandchildren, our people, our blood, continuing. There's nothing wrong with that. Every human wants that. Look, That's the most basic thing to want. Okay? He just slapped his mic. It is. It is. And he let me just a... say, I'm, I'm Mr. Parenthetical. I speak only in parentheticals. Like, pause. Oh, here's another point. Can't control myself. The other point is, that's so obviously true that it kind of makes you wonder why no one ever mentions it. So the big questions in a country, if you're running a country, you have to answer three or four big questions before you proceed. And they're the, the most obvious ones. Like, do we have enough food? Hey, clean water, got that? What? Can we defend ourselves? Keep the invaders out? Do we have enough energy? Like, how are we going to stay warm this winter and make things? Energy. So those are the most basic questions any society asks. The Romans asked that every society from then till now has asked those questions because they're the ones that matter. If you live in a place where no one asks any of those questions, something's gone wrong. If we're arguing about pregnancy flight suits... What? What? Instead, maybe that... Which we are, because that's what they're interested in. Maybe there's some denial in progress. What? And on the individual... Pre what? Pre did he say pregnancy flight suits? Like flight suits that can accommodate the belly of a pregnant per is that is that what he was refer what is who talks about what? He's gonna find a point soon. Every time I pause and, and or like every time I turn the camera to me, I think I'm gonna have something to say, but he keeps going and I don't. I don't have anything to say. I have nothing to say. I have nothing. That was a story recently. Can somebody give me the conservative argument against pregnancy flight suit? What's, what's wrong with that? He's talking about the Air Force making flight suits for pregnant people. If the Air Force thinks that it's acceptable for sometimes pregnant women to fly, shouldn't they have flight suits for pregnant people? It, right? Wouldn't that... Why, why not? All you have to do is just make a suit, but give it some more belly slack. But that's, what does that have to do with... I don't know. I don't know level the questions that really matter how are my children are they happy are they thriving are they independent of me which is the point of yeah, it's new to make get mad independent? that's the point are they, they don't know to, to clap will they find a mate so they can do what i did to create them in the first place which is reproduce what? and continue my family after i die as noted and the last question is by the way oh die i'm going to die what happens then so those are the questions those are the questions that have transfixed every society from the moment we left caves and probably even before. So if you suddenly wake up in a place where no one even mentions any of that, like at all. Okay. Pregnant air crew have been allowed to fly for decades. They just typically use larger flight suits, which means they're baggy around the arms and shoulders. So they'll just wear like larger and larger suits, which looked unprofessional and didn't work as well. So they just made one that can fit your person with the belly. That's it? This is the decline of civilization? This seems like a no-brainer. Wait, okay. Like, this doesn't, even, this doesn't even seem, like, woke to me. It's like, if pregnant women have been flying... Not every pilot is flying, like, 7G fighter jet takeoffs. A lot of them are probably just flying helicopters to transport goods and people. Like, it's, it's just even a woke thing. It's just a simple... Okay. Yeah, you don't understand. It's woke. And people are telling you that the coronavirus is the most important thing to happen in history? No, it's not. The what? only reason it's a world event is because of our, our overreaction to it. Period. Who has said that? Okay? What really matters is how's your family? Boo, boo, boo. That's true. What matters is your family, your children, continuing your family after you're gone, and what happens when you're gone. This but is an existential crisis. If you address those, you're a fool. 
Did the camera so, guy just I just think nod? It's very weird that it's almost by design that we are prevented from even asking those questions or thinking about them deeply. And I want to give a piece of unsolicited advice because I do have so many children. That's kind of what I do for a living. What is the camera guy doing? Which is, what is he talking? Fight back against that a little bit. It's impossible to take yourself out of this society unless you're going full Unabomber, which you probably shouldn't do. Certainly not the violence part. But, you know, you, it, there's a cost to living alone in an off-grid Montana cabin. No, it does appeal to me. And probably to others. You go, off-grid Montana cabin people. Yes, I'm on your side. I actually am on your side. I was thinking this morning when I was flying in, I was staring out the window like a dog of the plane and like watching my country go, you know, beneath me, 40,000 feet below. And I'm like, this is an amazingly beautiful country. What sane person would choose to live? And let, let's do top end. I just, I, I just want to be clear, okay? His rambling about the necessity of continuing the bloodline, blah, blah. I Like, this doesn't come off like Nazi speak to me. This literally just feels like somebody had one of my depressive episodes circa 2016 and then did coke and then went on stage. Like, the series, like, everything he's saying just comes off like an existential crisis to me. It's not some principled advocacy for the continuity of the country. It's just like, and him talking about how he hopes he's taken care of when he's old, like, the, I don't know. I, I, like, this is legitimately extremely fucking weird. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. It comes off very strange to me, like, beyond just nervousness, but okay. $30 million, 16th floor apartment in a crowded city over a log cabin in a pine forest with the wood stove glowing as the snow falls. Like, what in a... If that was an actual choice that you were presented, would you hesitate? Of course not. So I guess the larger point is, our basic human desires are not being met by the systems that have been created. Probably a lot of reasons for that. I'm not even going to speculate. I'm just saying, I'm looking around I'm like, this isn't what? working. People aren't getting what they need. The Capitalism? questions aren't being answered. The meaning is being stripped from their lives. What's the point of all of this? Oh, more Amazon deliveries. No, not the point. So that's bad, and it's not sustainable. That's the point. Before I explain that, let me just say, fight back a little bit by trying to turn down the noise just for like a half hour a day, start there. It's almost like a religious exercise. I take a sauna every day and sit alone in the hot wood room and just try and listen. Mostly I hear nothing other than the buzz of the sauna heater, but there are other days when you hear a lot. And if you get out of the habit of listening, and by listening I just mean being quiet and turning off the crap that's coming over your phone and begging you to turn away from the things that actually matter. It's, it's not, you don't have to become a monk or anything. You can still engage in the world. It's actually pretty low cost. But just to take a minute to be quiet and to listen for what you hear. And it's amazing. I mean, I can't believe anyone would take spiritual advice from me. I'm the last person. But it's just true. It's absolutely true. If you're just quiet for just a minute, things sort them out a little bit. And you begin to realize that, like, Twitter's ridiculous. Okay. The whole thing is ridiculous. The farther you get away from the noise, the more clearly you see it. And the more obvious it is... But you're the noise. Not all of it, but like a lot of it's like purely manufactured. So you're you the largest pundit in America. So you'll want to be the vice president at Citibank. Or you'd be like totally thrilled with your 16th floor apartment in some crumbling metroplex. Huh? Who actually wants that? Okay, new theory, all right? It's 12 hours before standing up here in this stage, Tucker Carlson fucked a hippie, got a very hasty lesson on uh, pagan witchcraft, and took DMT. And now, and he's, he's, he's writing it out. Or shrooms, maybe. And he's just, he's just riding it out right now, okay? Yeah, the cottage core shit. It's, it's fine. We have an explanation now. Nobody really wants that. But it's only until you step away a little bit that you realize that that's not what you want. Those and are not the your MT heart's shrooms. desires. Those aren't no, not desires. shrooms. Let's just say Those coke and shrooms, desires. okay? Whatever cocktail so here's why you I think want. I don't know drugs. Better. I think that, I mean, I have lots of deeply original opinions, like Corona's been bad. Um, let that settle, okay? I'm going to break a little new ground here, kind of know my bravery, so let me just say I don't think we responded well, okay? Obviously, it was a disaster. It was a complete disaster, and I'm not going to, you know, catalog the many ways in which it was a disaster because we're all living with them, and we saw a lot of really wonderful parts of our society just evaporate, and they're gone, and they're not coming what? back, and it's a tough thing to, to face, especially if you remember, a, you know, a different country that wasn't as chaotic and was just a pretty nice country, actually. You know, no better, for sure, no better. Is he describing COVID as a disaster? I've never heard anyone use the term disaster to describe COVID because a disaster usually implies like, well, I guess you could say natural disaster, but absent the natural, it usually kind of implies like a human fuck up. That's why we have natural disaster as the, dis oh, the COVID response was, okay, that makes more sense. If the COVID response was a disaster. I'm having a lot of trouble following him, you know? It's, it's quite difficult, actually. That's the one thing you learn when you travel. So that's really sad. But, you know, everything in life is a mixed blessing. And people who claim otherwise, either the doomsayers or the used car salesmen, they're both lying. Like, everything in the temporal world is a mixed blessing. 
If you wake up one morning and something is all good, you're dead. You've gone to a better place. No, I'm serious. Like, that's always a lie. Oh, it's going to be all good. We just need to protect the borders of eastern Ukraine. And then we're done. Okay. What? Might there be some unintended consequences of threatening the use of nuclear weapons? I'm just guessing. No, none. Got to. Okay, good. You sound like a wise leader. So anyway, there's, everything is a mixed blessing. It's good and bad. It's bound up together in a way that's kind of hard to separate. But here's one good thing about corona, in my opinion. The right. freedom that it gives younger people, who really have just been completely screwed out of their country in a way that's very upsetting to me as the father of young people, the freedom that it gives them, at least potentially, to opt out and remain beneficiaries of the society, in other words, you can still produce things, you can still participate, you can still use the gifts that you were born with to make the society better. You don't have to live totally off-grid. You don't have to go you know, full crazy, hermit. But you don't have to participate in the systems that really are, it's not an overstatement, oppressing people, making them sad. What? Is he, is he talking about the COVID unemployment payment? What, what is he referring to? What about COVID facilitated the ability to opt out of certain... Is he talking about kids being let out of schools? L literally, what are we talking about? I, I have no... Yeah, is this, is this his anarchist take? Is he against uh, mandatory schooling? Is he against bedtimes? Stripping the meaning from their lives. Hurting them, bossing them around, humiliating them on purpose. Hey, 50-year-old nurse, get the shot, or who just like, spent two years helping corona patients, who knows more about medicine than Joe Biden ever will. You're going to get fired. There we go. Got a point. Because somehow some 79-year-old elected official knows more about science than a frontline nurse. Tell me how that works exactly. Well, Explosive actually, so it was understand. Fauci who, and he's been That's doing this. That's That's humiliation. No one's helped by that. The only point of that is to let you know who's in charge. And to let you know that you're not, and that your job is to obey. It's not your country. What, can I just ask, like, what do you think people would have thought in, like, 1905? One mass, two mass. responded to January 6th. 1905, Teddy Roosevelt was president, okay? Most popular president we ever had. Polling was young. We're kind of guessing, but I think it's pretty clear. Teddy Roosevelt was the most popular president, youngest president we ever had. President was killed. He was VP, becomes president, ser serves out the whole term, elected to another. It's an amazing human being. 1905. They would have hated Teddy, by the way. Trustbuster Teddy, the guy who hated industry and hated Monopoly. Yeah, they would have hated Teddy Roosevelt. They would have hated him with every fiber of their being. They would have despised him. Raph election. Teddy Roosevelt's like, well, I'm a con. I want to meet some voters. So he walks out to the lawn in front of his house, which is white, White House. And he says, you know, I'd kind of like to talk to anyone, you know, because it's, it's my house, but, you know, it's also your house because it's your country. And everyone, you know, who wants to talk about it can amble up on the lawn and we'll talk. Okay. And he stood there and talked to them. And that was okay. not considered weird. And this guy was in office because his predecessor had been assassinated. So it wasn't like this was a time without violence. There was definitely violence. He was yeah. killed by an anarchist, a lunatic. So Teddy Roosevelt knew perfectly well the costs <laughs> of opening himself up to the public. He was a very brave person. He had great physical courage personally. But he also didn't have much of a choice because it wasn't his house. It belonged to the people to whom the country belongs. And those are what American is, citizens. What does this have to do? So what are we... Imagine telling someone living in that country, we just arrested people for walking down the hall in the Capitol building. I mean, not I just want to say, if January 6th had happened when Teddy Roosevelt was in office, they would have been gunned down. To be perfectly clear, if you think modern day, like, uh, anti-riot, like, defensive behavior from the Capitol Police is bad, do you know what they did to protesters back in 1905? You all would have been dead. Unironically, that's not a joke. You can take a look at how uh, dangerous protests were dispersed back in those days. One on the White House? You fucking kidding me? You would have been, they would have gotten their, they would have pulled out the one Gatling gun. When were Gatling guns invented? When were they invented? Were they around? They were around, right? They were in the late, yeah. invented in 1862. They would have gotten many Gatling guns. They would have rolled a fucking train out in front of the yard and just, just absolutely fucking vaporized the crowd. The, the idea that Teddy Roosevelt speak softly and carry a big stick would have permitted anti-Democrat insurrectionists to attack the Capitol building uh, in an effort to hang uh, 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 like candidates. Not in, not in, the, not in, the, in the most wild universe. Teddy would have killed a few personally. Yeah. Absolutely he would have. Teddy was a was a was a rough and ride and rootin' tootin' cowboy.
dude would have pulled out, would have gotten a fucking ivory handled revolver from the Oval Office desk and sort of wandered out there humming and spinning the gun around on his forefinger before taking a few shots through a window. Would have, would have, would have tried to, you know, keep the sun out of his eyes, saying, ha, "Got one," you know. He, not, not a chance, not a chance. Not the people who broke the windows, the people who literally walked down the hall of the Capitol, and there are a lot of them who got arrested, like a lot of them. Of course, free them. Well, but also, I'll say this: for a and ask yourself, like, what the hell? They wouldn't have been Since arrested if Teddy was president. Well, yeah, it's their building, it's their capital, it's their country, they're American citizens. Who do you think owns it? Wait, that's not how that works. Hey, do you think he applies that logic to when BLM protesters tried to storm police headquarters? Those are public buildings. Oh no, he doesn't believe that. Don't worry about it. Like that's insane. That's that's not how that works. So the assumptions have really changed, and unfortunately, and this is like I would say eighty percent of my job, and luckily I'm old enough; it's pretty easy. It's just to mark the passage of time and the change in attitudes. So we all remember it actually didn't used to work this way at all. Like, this wasn't how things were done. This is not what we believed. This kind of wasn't what we signed up for. This is all brand new. And I don't care how many fake New York Times histories of America you write. I was there for a lot of it. This is nonsense. I, this is not I, true. I was there big for... Change. And by the way, we never voted on he it. He sounds like Peterson. So you just kind of imposed it. So if you're a young person and you're very clearly being excluded from this world that is being built... To some extent, at your expense, how do you respond? Well, first, the upside of Corona. The promise, and it is a reality for a lot of people, is that you actually don't have to live in the places where they control you the most precisely. Yeah, Tucker Carlson is a 1,000-year-old you know, dragon of lawyer. Are increasing. I mean, the problem with technology is that it empowers the government to keep track of you. Our government is so bloated, so inefficient, that in a perfect world, you think, well, they're never going to find me to hassle me because they don't even come back from lunch until 3 o'clock. You know, these are, these are people who are more likely to die in their job than be fired from their job. It's just so lame that actually they can't molest me. And that would be true. You just make sure I've got the context on this one correct. Let me just, uh, one second. Hassle me because they don't even come back from lunch until 3 o'clock. They're never going to find me. It's so bloated, so inefficient that in a perfect world you think, well, they're never going to find me to hassle me because... They don't even come back from lunch until 3 o'clock. The FBI? We're talking you about know, the these are, these are people who are more likely to die in their job than be fired from their job. It's just so lame that actually they can't molest me. And that would be true except for technology. Which, and that's true. And it empowers the completely inept. That's the truth of technology. It allows people who are both dumb and useless and take four-hour lunch breaks to know where you are anyway. It makes it really easy to control you. You mean the and feds? If you haven't received your text from the CDC haranguing you about your ninth ineffective vaccine, you probably will. So I've never been texted by the CDC. You kind of want to be CDC. as far away from that as you possibly can be. So as I'm watching all this happen, I'm really interested in where people live because I think it tells you a lot. I'm totally convinced that 95% of what people say is just made up. They, it, it's like, when you have kids, you'll know this, or if you have dogs, you'll learn it. Like they, no, it's true. They don't listen to you at all. They don't. They only watch what you do. They're not stupid. They don't believe. You know, they don't watch my show. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, I got it. All right, okay. It's just, it's just, it's you're barking. And it doesn't matter to them. What they watch very carefully is what you do. What are you doing? And that's how you know. If you want to know what someone really loves, watch how he spends his time. You know what I mean? They can say they love you, but if they never come home, then how much do they love you? I mean, it's just true. I'm sorry. And so what? I'm really interested in where people move because you can what? say whatever you want, but moving is a big deal. I mean, you're moving into a new place. And the trend that I see is people are leaving the big and embracing the small. On both sides, but it's not even a partisan thing. You know, it's like L.A. Austin, Portland Bozeman. New York, Burlington, Chicago, Naples. In every case, people are like, we have Chicago, Naples people here? Of course we do. They're everywhere. Yeah, baby. Get out fast. Why are they doing that? Because it's not working. And it's not working at the most basic level. Not only is it, you know, dangerous and the stores are boarded up and like all the obvious signs of decline and ominous signs of decline, but at the most basic level, it's not working because there's no community. What's so interesting to me is as actual communities disappear, we hear the word community a lot more. Everything's a community. You know, the black community, the trans community, Latino community, everyone's got a community. Well, okay, I'm listening to this. How are those different from voting blocks? Well, of course they're not. So as things disappear... What? What? Demographic groups are referred to as voting blocks. That's how they're treated by pollsters and by election specialists and by campaign managers. Okay. People tend to kind of pretend that they're more common. 
So let's see the black community. Well, there are 47 million African Americans in America. A community is people who know each, and they're each created by God and different, you know, because all people are different. They have different interests and desires and opinions. They're not faceless. None of us are faceless parts of a larger whole. We're not soldiers in anyone's political army. We're people. Remember how 30 minutes ago, Charlie Kirk was literally saying, risk losing money at your job, risk getting fired. It'll all be worth it because at least you won't be woke. Remember that literally happened 30 minutes ago where Charlie was saying you have to accept sacrifice to be a warrior against wokeness in favor of conservatism? Oh my god, I can't. I, and the, it's the same audience and they're going to eat this shit up. They're about to clap. They're just absolute fucking lemmings. And as oh. they talk about community, actual communities are being destroyed by them. So what's a community? I think it's like one of the most important things in life. The community is people you know. That's what a community is. They're people you actually know, not people you think about or look this like. This still or feels like an existential it's crisis. people you talk to, whose faces you recognize. If someone you love dies, and you think, oh, I really want to talk to someone, you don't call all 7,000 people in your college class. If they're not your friends, you don't have 7,000 friends in college. What? You have like five friends. And they're still your friends, and that's what you call them. That's called your community. It's the people you love, are responsible for, the people you really know. And so I feel like one of the results of all of this is that people know this in their bones. They know it intuitively. They need community. They need to live with other people and know them. Not talk about them. Not G-chat or whatever. I'm so caught up. I hate that stuff so much. I don't even know what it's called. But whatever. Interact on the internet. That's not a community. That's an ursa community. That's a substitute for community. It's a fake community. That's not real. So, and, and we can feel that it's not real because it doesn't reward us. We, we're not elevated by it. You don't get, not that I've ever spent a night on the internet. Boy, that sounds creepy. <laughs> and it sounds creepy because it is creepy, actually. It is creepy. I'm sorry. It is. But I don't think anyone's ever spent a night on the internet and come back and said, you know, I really feel like, really unburdened myself like they understood me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I am loved. I'm loved. What by the people fuck I are we talking about? Like, I, they got my back. This entire speech is, is about death and having children and having friends, but not in like a politically determined or coherent way, but like a half-baked expression of his emotional biases. Yeah, can somebody give him a teleprompter? This is, this is wild. Right. No, they don't. You don't know them, actually, and you will never know them. You know the people who are right there with you. And so, I mean, for me, it's, I think of it in my mind anyway as the concentric circles theory of love and obligation. So all of us are born with obligations to the people around us. And I'm a conservative, I believe in the individual, but that does not mean I don't have obligations to other individuals. I don't want to be bossed around by anybody. I'm my own man. But I have a lot Billionaire of people to because I love them. And I serve them. I mean, we all do. That's, that's the joy of life, is the commitments that we have to other people. So what are they? Well, the first circle, in my concentric circle theory that I think about my sauna, is your family. The people God put right next to you. By the way, not always the best people. True. You didn't choose them. I mean, sometimes they're kind of awful. You know, we've all lived with that. Mostly they're pretty wonderful. But it doesn't matter because they're your family. You don't get to choose it. It's an You guys know that, that trope in bad movies where a character with personal issues has to do a public speech and another character doesn't know what they're going to say and then the character tosses out their speech and gives a speech that's really just a thinly veiled reference to all the personal issues they have with this other person? Yeah, like like the shit BoJack Horseman did like eight times over. The yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we're watching. Like that's what's happening right here. Obligation you were born with, and you got to bear up under it. You got to do the best you can. So your first obligation is to your family. And I know everyone was like cheering. Chris Cuomo was such a moron, obviously. And <laughs> no, he's got a steroid problem and the whole thing. I got it. But of all the things that you could fire Chris Cuomo for, and there are a million of them, faking his quarantine, lecturing us about masks while he didn't wear one, pretending you no know, Omicron was like a more than a cold, whatever, the whole thing. It's ridiculous. But the thing they fired him for was family loyalty. That, that was actually what it was. His brother's a complete creep. He's a complete creep, but they're still brothers. I don't care what my brother did. I mean it. If he showed up and he's like, I need a fake passport to, you know, Buenos Aires, done. <laughs> not because I agree with what he did, not because I want to break the law, but because he's my brother. That's my first obligation, my brother. I mean... Well, I'm glad that's the moral objection Tucker Carlson takes from the whole Cuomo situation. I can't believe, I can't believe he didn't, I, I can't believe he, 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 <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. That, if that, if that's, if that's all you have to say, if that's your, your injection into this, 
I'm, I'm, I'm borderline speechless. It's incredible. Like, that's what he had to say on this. All of the millions of things, the, the infinite permutation of things that he could have said there. And he chose this one. Almost optimized. Yeah, I'm getting like secondhand social anxiety from watching this. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm experiencing a fragment of what other people's social anxiety and public speaking must feel like, and it's actually deeply uncomfortable. I'm getting like sympathy pains. Yeah, it's like a bad dream. It's like a bad dream. Like I'm forced to watch this and I'm feeling what he's feeling. And it's just yeah, you know what I mean? Like, or those dreams where you do a thing that's really awkward, but you're also in the audience watching yourself do it, so you feel both sides of the, the pain. It's that is your basic obligation, period. You can't get out of it, much as you may want to. And that obligation is the basis of your strength. There is something bigger than the government or Fauci or whatever. It's like, yeah, okay, fine, bark all you want, but it's my family. Like, the mafia were totally right about that. The Cuomo's, they were. Everyone's down on the mafia, whatever, not for the mafia entirely. They did a pretty good job, let's be honest, but whatever. They did. <laughs> there was no crime in Brooklyn. Um, they did. And by the way, their lottery was much more fair than the one the government runs. I'm sorry, I had to get that out. It was. They actually paid you the full amount. They were, they were like, we'll give you one dollar a year for the next thousand years. Oh, shut up. You're scamming me. The mafia's like, here's the money. Okay. Anyway, but at the core, you can see why no one wants to dinner with me. Uh, <laughs> Isn't it funny that at the beginning of a speech, the only coherent political point he made was that getting rid of the police wouldn't make things better, but the mafia's purpose was literally to substitute? What a place to pause. The purpose of the Mafia was literally to substitute the, func the function of the police through organized crime, like all other gangs. <laughs> Dinner with me. Uh. <laughs> if I see any simping from Shu after this, I don't even Sorry, know. Excuse me. But, but at, at, the, at the core of the, <laughs> at the core of the code is loyalty to your family. And that is your most basic. So, like, they hate that. They hate that. They want you to tattle on your family. Ooh, your parents not wearing their mask? Call the Fauci hotline. You know, I, I think I'll die first, actually, but thanks. I'll never do that. Like, that's the red line for me. Okay, so outside your family is what? Your friends. The people you chose to be in community with. The people you chose to love. The people God put in your path. And you have a real obligation to them. And if you're blessed, you know, you'll grow old with them. You know, you start when you're young, and then you'll wake up and you're like... Bam! You know, it's like prostate exam time, and then like, you, or, and then wherever that goes, and we know this where it goes. This is an goes existential all the way to the end, crisis. Like, ah, it's so poignant and wonderful. And if you have that experience, that was so vulgar. I'm sorry. <laughs> so now you know what my group texts are about with my college. This roommate. is literally an existential crisis. It's every. He's talking about the nature of community, friends, family, death, being taken care of when he's old, waking up one day and realizing you're old enough to get a prostate exam. This is literally a midlife crisis. I'm not joking. This is uh, this is legitimately. Uh, an existential crisis taking place live. I'm not joking. It's not hyperbole. The drugs might be hyperbole. I legitimately think this is a kind of mental health break. Um, but, uh, but that is one of the, the greatest experiences in life, is to share it with the people you choose to share it with. Those are called your friends. These are not like randoms you like. These are like people you've made a commitment to. These are your lifelong friends. And you have to take that as seriously as you possibly can. That they all want to get together for some stupid golf trip in Scotland every year, and you can't really afford it, and you hate golf, go anyway. Because you have a I'm serious, because you have a commitment to them. Why? Okay, and after that are the people that you work with, who we often call co-workers, which is a phrase made up by some HR department somewhere, which I, for some reason, hate. Co-workers. Okay, stop. What? Guys I work with. That's the term. The people at work. That's the term. And if you have a job that you don't hate, you know, you hope you're working towards something that's worth doing. You're adding something, whatever it is. That's what that I'm serious. Means. Work is a huge source of meaning in our lives. He wants us and to say And if it's not, comrade. you should do something else. And you should use the gifts that you were born with. Shouldn't waste your time on stuff you can't do. I could talk to you for hours about all the things I thought I could do and couldn't. And I was finally like, okay, I'll just do the one thing I can do. I can talk, I'll do that. And that's what I did. And that's true for every person. And usually you find that there's a massive difference between some things and other things. Some things you're really naturally good at and some things you're, you're really bad at. You know, I, I can't add three-digit numbers, never have been able to. Okay, it's fine. It actually hasn't, I just sort of gave up and you know, whatever. I had a happy life anyway. I focused on the things that I like to do and that I'm good at, which are usually related. They're usually the same thing. If you really have a love for something, it suggests, it doesn't prove, but it suggests that you have a natural aptitude. Do that. And if you find yourself doing that, you'll really find meaning in that and value. You know, everybody has something, this is all so hokey, but it's totally real. Everyone has something to give. Like you've got this stuff inside you and you want to get it out. 
And you love the people around you, and you love your country, and you want to make it a little better. You can't save it. No one's in charge of it. But you can make it a little better for the people right around you, and you should. And that's called your job. And because that has meaning, you have an obligation to the people that you work with, even if they're kind of annoying. Why? Because they're in your path. That's why. So we spend way too much time thinking about people we will never meet, not that they're bad people, not that we shouldn't care about them. If there's a mudslide in Bangladesh, I'm sad about it. I mean that. I don't want anyone to be hurt. I hate natural disasters. All normal people do. But it's not my obligation to fix that because they're not in my path. So be very wary of people who are giving... What? I, I like this. This this path language is essentially a roundabout way of justifying nationalism. It's it's like, you know, you care for yours first. The problem is, any logic which would lead you to care about your countrymen would lead you to care about people in Bangladesh. There's no way around that. Like, oh, I care about America and Americans. Why? Well, they're my people. Well, we're all humans. Yeah, but they're in other countries. Okay. Like, but it's, it's, it's completely arbitrary, you know. Um... I, th I still think this is an existential crisis. Giving you long lectures about improving the lives of people they've never met, while the people around them wither. Which is absolutely the model for so many of our leaders. And look, I, you know, you're not entirely in control of your children, and good people have kids that go wrong or whatever, but if all your kids go wrong... Calling it now, he found a you know, lump in his testicle this where morning. You're like, ah, is there he a moment of internal reckoning? There probably should be. Learned he has prostate anybody. cancer. I don't want to be about it. No parent wants to judge anybody else's parenting. Because you know that there are factors that you can't control. You know, genetics, for one thing. I mean, this stuff is very complicated. But that should what? be your major concern. And if that goes off the rails, like, maybe you should spend more time dealing with it before you try and take control of a country and impose your vision on people who actually don't need your help. What? what? People who haven't learned the meaning maybe of friendship should shouldn't... But it's never that way. It's always the opposite of that. It's the people who have no what? interest in dealing with the problems that are right around them, that God put right in their path, it's like right in your face. Someone you love, you're related to, you're obligated to, someone you see every day needs your help, but you turn away to go help people you've never met. Maybe you're in this business in the first place because there's a huge hollow space inside that you can't fill. I mean, this is super mean, but I'm just going to say it. After 35 years in D.C., I began to wonder, like, why are all the politicians weird? <laughs> and I don't mean weird From like you they vote. You know, some of it I agree with it, others I don't. But why are they weird, like, on the most basic level? Like, what percentage of members of Congress go home to a happy personal scene? I, I'm, I'm serious. I mean, there's some. You know, I've known, I think I met one in the 90s. No, I'm just kidding. No, I think, I do think they exist. There are not a ton of them. There are not a ton of them who open the door and their spouse is like, oh, I'm so glad you're home. Oh, I missed you. Kids run up, dogs bark, lick. There's just, like, not any of that going on, actually. This is still people. about I'm sorry. the existential crisis. This is a disproportionately unhappy group with barren, sad personal lives. And, and I mean, like, over 90%. So I'm watching this, and I'm thinking, well, that's kind of weird. Because if I open the phone book and pick 535 people, just told completely at random, and put them in charge of the country, what percentage would have sad, barren, personal lives? I don't know, maybe 40%. I don't know, depending on the year, tough year, 60%. It would not be 95%. It absolutely would not be. It's just like that's, that's you know, the laws of averages don't get us to 95%. So there's clearly a connection between the sadness in the parts of your life that mean the most. The only things you will care about in your final moments, trust me. The only things... The only things that actually matter, no, it's not your job, it's your family and people you love. That's all that matters. Other people are all that matter. And yet the people in charge... You know, I think we should we should say our graces. And This is another argument against Bernie or Busters, okay? Because I really don't think you get examples of, of Democrat pundits acting like this. You know what I mean? Like, th this is absolutely deranged. You know, like, the Democrats made a very low bar, but yet this feels like a comedy bit. You know what I mean? Like somebody making fun of somebody like Tucker Carlson. It's not a right-wing rant at all. It's a Tucker Carlson rant. It's not like this, yeah, this feels like a lead-up to a suicide. Like he's about to shoot himself on stage or something. So like that, like that, like that, that bit in Birdman, you know, where like it gets a little more unhinged towards the end and he realized he switched the guns out or something. Like, it's really fucking weird. Just like get therapy i like i know i know that he just does what he's told to do and he makes a lot of money doing it but like if it's bad for your soul have the least of that what the hell is that and of course it's compensating it's exactly what it is you can't have wise leadership from people with unbalanced lives you just can't you can't and it's not it's not a matter of knowledge and what the data are okay Got Google? I was wondering we could find the data, but of course they've all been hidden. Got DuckDuckGo? Anyway, 
right? But what? the point is, the facts are ascertainable. The question is, what do they mean? That's the question. So that's not a matter of knowledge, that's a matter of wisdom. Mean. So any intern can gather, like, the data, but it takes someone who understands what's important, understands people, understands life in its full scope, understands we're going to be here next week, so let's think ahead to that point at very least, understands that we're all going to go away and be replaced by other people, maybe we should care about them. It takes someone like that to make decisions based on that information, and that's exactly what we don't have. We've got a ton of people who are totally cut off because they live in a hermetically sealed, airless world where they're really, really worried about getting super sick, which I, you know, I'm, I'm sympathetic to that. But that doesn't mean that people who are 25 and at no risk at all should pay the cost for that. I get that you're concerned. We brought it back. And I respect that. And I have relatives in that position. I can't overstate how much I'm not mocking and how seriously I'm taking those fears because I think they're grounded. I'm not making fun of anybody. We all have to decide you know, what we're afraid of and how we're going to respond to it. What I think is completely unacceptable is destroying the next generation of Americans because you're afraid. I think it's cowardly. I think it's disgusting. I think it's one of the great crimes ever committed. Very I confused clapping. It's totally cowardly. It's totally... I'm 52, so, you know, like, I'm, I'm more than halfway there. And I can't leave stop tonight. talking about age and death. I'm, de I'm just looking for signs that this is continuing existential crisis, and he can't stop talking. This is a crisis. He has... This is a crisis moment. This video doesn't end with his suicide, destroyed. right? Any normal person would. Any normal person would hesitate for one second. Not one second. Well, I could live another 30 years and play more golf. Or my kids could thrive. You know, I'm going to have to take a weekend to think about it. What? What? No normal person. Wait, he's, he's saying right now that people in their 50s should be willing to die to, to prevent younger people from having to experience lockdown. He just said that. Nah, fuck that. Nope. Thinks that way. This is his take before. Yeah, of course, he's vaccinated. He's not honest. He got vaccinated right away. Fox News has a vaccination requirement for everyone who works there. He's getting his booster shots the nanosecond he has the ability to. He might even be able to get them faster than regular people because of how connected he is. And if you're in charge of a country, you have to think of the country first. It's actually not about you. You narcissist. He's creep. fine. It's not about you. Wait, aren't they individuals? Well, I'm so afraid. Okay, you're so afraid. Like, I don't judge you. We all have irrational fears. Didn't they just say your first should be your family and then your friend? Now they're like, well, the country should come before you. How? You can't say you're individualist and then go, you should sacrifice yourself for the nation. What the fuck are you guys talking about? Actually, some rational fears. There are things to be afraid of. It's all right. But you can't lead if you're afraid. Like, like critical totally race theory. Terrified people shouldn't be in charge of anything. Terrified people? Says, who? So, so this is like the most obvious- As opposed to Republicans who spend their entire fucking time in office fear-mongering. That's all they do. That's all his, his channel is. This thing in world history. No country puts terrified people in charge. It's like there's no animal species that does that. Oh, the whimpering dog's gonna lead the pack. That's a good idea. No! Whimpering dog gets to the back. He follows the big brave dog. Like, that's how life is. How far are you from nature? Uh, critical race theories tearing our country apart. We're on the brink of destruction because of these woke statue destroying pregnant flight suit constructing. That's what we're All if all Tucker Carlson's segments are is fearmongering. That's that's it. That's all That's all he talks about. It, it's just non-stop Fearmongering. This is going to destroy the country. This is going to destroy the country. war on Christmas, war on Easter, war on so everything, you think it's a war good on idea God. To put a terrified old guy in charge of Corona. What? What? No, Say I mean, what? So here's the upside. This can't continue. Nature writes the rules. We don't. And Joe Biden certainly doesn't. Nature what? writes the rules. Period. We're not in charge of those rules that are immutable. They apply to the Romans. They apply to us. What? These are the laws of nature. We are subject to them whether we want to be or not. We can't change them. We can't transition out of them. We can't identify as being exempt from them. Because they don't change. They don't care what we think. Nature, God, is outside of our control. We can what? only respond. That's it. And we can respond wisely or we can respond foolishly, but we can't pretend we're in charge of it. You He's still talking about the inevitability of death. You can't identify as warm. It will kill you. No, it's true. 
So that's not like some crackpot right-wing theory I thought up this afternoon. Oh, I'm speaking a turning point. Better torque up the politics. That's like the truest thing there is. And if you forget that at scale, like as a country, you know, it just doesn't work. It will never work. I don't care what, you know, people with degrees on Twitter are telling you. That's just not real. And it will snap back because it has to. If it can't continue, it won't, and it won't. So all you need to do is get as far away from these people as you possibly can so you can stay sane. I mean it. I mean it. That makes a huge... I've done it. I'm not going to get in, into my weird personal life, which is totally not weird. The one thing I'll say about it is, like, I opted out of that. I don't want to be around that stuff anymore. And at my age, I'm just not going to be. I'm not going to be around that. I'm not going to be around it for one more minute of my life. And I have a flexible job, and so I'm not around it. I'm not around any crazy people. I'm around people who disagree with me. That's totally fine with me. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I don't mind being disagreed with. I'm not always right. I'm often wrong. But I definitely don't want to be around crazy people who want to wreck stuff. Absolutely not. I want to be around happy people who want to build stuff. And there are only two kinds of people. You're either creating something beautiful or you're tearing it down. That's it. That's it. You're either creating something beautiful or you're tearing it down. And all the joy in life is in creating something beautiful, whether it's... Remember right. when these guys tore down Biden's Build Back Better plan that would have uh, built things beautiful all across America? Oof. Relationships or children or your work product. That's the joy right there, is in making stuff. And hoping that it lasts. And if you're around people who are like taking joy and kicking it down or spray painting it, just move away. Like it's not, it's not, this is not a rational thing, this is a spiritual battle, you're not going to win them over through argument. You don't want physical conflict with them, that's horrible, violence is horrible. Aww. And I guess sometimes it's, you know, unavoidable. But if you can avoid it, you should, because it's bad. Uh -huh. hurt people, you know? Just get away. And now, you can. You absolutely can, not all of you can, some of you are tethered to this or that obligation, or there are still places with that internet service, I guess. What? But I look at these cities and I'm like, why isn't everyone living on the shores of Lake Superior in like an abandoned Finnish settler village? What, you know, taking saunas every day and like looking out on the steely gray water and feeling happy. Does he know? They're in some like super depressing parking spot driving 20 miles to, you know, why would you do that? And getting yelled at and flashing signs on the highway telling you to wear a mask or get your injection or whatever. No, thanks. I don't want to be around that at all. And you shouldn't either. And you should run away. You will feel much happier and you will see much more clearly. You, I, I mean, so I, I can't, this is supposed to be the working class down to earth person. His studio for his own show is shot in like a fake wood shop. And he's like, I don't understand why people with jobs don't just go move off and go to a vacation house and just live there their whole lives and somehow just get food, medicine, and everything else they need to, like I get, you know, just, just magically. Why don't they all just do that? This is, re he's really saying this. Some of you have to deal with it, but some of you don't, and you shouldn't. It's a continental country. The whole interior of the country has been abandoned. It's unpopulated. Take it back. It's your country. You can live there if you want. It's all right. And you should. Sure, conservatives. Yes. And then sure. I recommend kind of waiting out a Go little bit and build like a real community. To a place with no, no it's internet nice connection. It's not nice the guy at the grocery store, or the ladies at the post office. That's not sure. a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing, actually. It's a good thing. And the more of that you get in your life, the happier you'll be. And then you can wait for the dawn, which is coming. Thank you. <laughs> all right. He, he went the wrong direction after he. He had to correct. He, he was like. Wow, I'm. I'm, I'm legitimately at a loss. I actually, I have like a, a numbing pain in my head right now. He, he needs therapy. That was just a therapy sesh. He was just. If he had refrained from turning around for a second longer, he might have walked off stage, which, to be honest, would have been the funniest thing I'd have ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, please don't trauma dump on stage. Please, guys, listen. That's all I have to say from this. Honest to God, I, I feel like brain blasted right now. I Don't trauma dump on stage, kids, okay? It's not cool. It's not all right. Yeah, we deserve a sauna trip after that. That was really unhinged. That was... I don't even have, like, jokes. Like, legitimately. I, I, this is my ableism mark, man. It's not even politics. It's just mental illness. Just so much of political history is just people with broken brains, like, and, and positions of power. Jesus, fuck.